What makes a man become a monster? What drives him to commit unspeakable acts of violence? These are questions that have puzzled psychologists, criminologists, and ordinary people alike for centuries. Today, we delve into the story of Jeffrey Dahmer, a man who was once just a boy next door, but would later become one of America's most notorious serial killers. Born on May 21, 1960, in the heart of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Jeffrey Dahmer was an ordinary child in an ordinary family. His parents, Lionel and Joyce Dahmer, were loving and attentive, with no indication of the darkness that would later shroud their family name. Dahmer's childhood was filled with the typical joys and sorrows of growing up. He played with neighborhood kids, excelled in school, and showed a keen interest in nature. But as he grew older, a disturbing interest began to take root. He developed a fascination with dissecting roadkill, an unusual hobby that suggested a darker curiosity lurking beneath his seemingly normal exterior. As he entered his teenage years, his behavior became increasingly erratic, and his once bright future began to dim. In public, Dharma was a quiet, somewhat awkward individual, often blending into the background. He was the kind of person you wouldn't look twice at in a crowd. But behind closed doors, he was a man wrestling with monstrous desires. This stark contrast between Dharma's public persona and his hidden, darker side introduces us to the concept of the duality of human nature. It's a chilling reminder that evil can often hide in plain sight, cloaked in the guise of normality. The tale of Jeffrey Dahmer is a haunting exploration of how a seemingly regular man can become a monster. It's a journey into the abyss of the human mind, a descent into the darkest corners of human potential. It's a story that forces us to confront uncomfortable truths about the nature of evil and the capacity for cruelty within us all. But what led this ordinary man to become one of America's most notorious serial killers? This question will guide us as we delve deeper into the life and crimes of Jeffrey Dahmer in the scenes to come. To understand the monster, we must first delve into the darkness that bred him. Jeffrey Dahmer, also known as the Milwaukee Cannibal, didn't spring from the ether. He was born into an average American family in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in 1960. However, his seemingly ordinary early life was punctuated with moments that hinted at the horror to come. During his formative years, Dahmer developed a morbid fascination with animals. He would often collect roadkill and dissect them in his backyard, a chilling precursor to the gruesome acts he would later commit. These early experiences, while alarming, were largely dismissed as childhood curiosity. But beneath the surface, a more sinister transformation was occurring. Dharma's parents, mired in their own marital discord, largely overlooked their son's growing obsession. This lack of parental attention, coupled with Dharma's increasing feelings of isolation and loneliness, created a perfect storm. Psychological evaluations of Dharma would later reveal a complex web of mental health issues. He was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, schizotypal personality disorder, and a psychotic disorder, all of which may have contributed to his capacity for such extreme violence. One of the most striking revelations came from Dharma's interviews. He admitted to experiencing intense feelings of abandonment, which he attempted to quell through his macabre acts. His victims, he explained, were objects of desire whom he wished to control completely, even in death. But it's important to remember, these explanations are not justifications. They are mere fragments of a shattered psyche that, when pieced together, begin to form the silhouette of a man who would become one of the most notorious serial killers in history. It's a chilling reminder that monsters aren't born, they are made. And in the case of Jeffrey Dahmer, the seeds of his monstrous acts were sown in a garden of neglect, mental illness, and a deep-seated fear of abandonment. This was the beginning of a twisted journey that would shock the world. The horrors that unfolded behind closed doors were beyond anyone's worst nightmare. In the quiet city of Milwaukee, Jeffrey Dahmer, a seemingly ordinary man, was leading a double life, one that would soon shock the world. His actions, carried out with chilling precision, were a stark contrast to his unassuming demeanor. Dharma's crimes were a living nightmare, the sort of terror that you'd only expect to find in the darkest corners of a horror film. Yet they were all too real. His victims were often lured with friendly gestures or promises of money, only to meet a fate more horrific than they could ever imagine. The grisly details that emerged were enough to make even the most hardened detectives shudder. 
Dharma didn't just kill his victims, he desecrated their bodies in unspeakable ways, crossing lines that few could even fathom. As the crimes unfolded, a sense of dread fell over Milwaukee. The community, once buzzing with life, was gripped by fear. Parents held their children a little tighter, neighbors watched each other with suspicion, and every stranger became a potential threat. The city was paralyzed, a shadow of its former self. The gruesome reality of Dharma's crimes was a stark reminder of the evil that can lurk in the most unexpected places. It was a chilling testament to how well a monster can hide behind the mask of normality. Dharma's reign of terror was not just a series of heinous acts, but a chilling reminder of the depths to which humanity can sink. It was a dark chapter in the annals of crime, one that would leave an indelible scar on the face of Milwaukee an unspeakable reign of terror that left a city paralyzed with fear. The legacy of Jeffrey Dahmer was a chilling testament to the darkness that can lurk beneath the surface, forever changing the way we view our neighbors, our friends, and even ourselves. In the face of horror, a desperate search for justice began. As our narrative progresses, we delve into the intricate web of the investigation surrounding Jeffrey Dahmer. The law enforcement officers were confronted with a task as daunting as it was necessary. Their mission was to piece together the horrifying puzzle of Dharma's monstrous deeds, a job not for the faint of heart. The investigation was a labyrinth of complexity, with every piece of evidence leading to more questions than answers. The crime scenes were a grim tableau, a chilling testament to the darkness that lurked within Dharma's mind. The detectives were met with the gruesome reality of his actions and the cold, calculated manner in which he executed them. The task was arduous, the evidence was overwhelming, and the pressure was mounting. But the investigators were undeterred. They were driven by a single-minded pursuit of justice. Tirelessly, they sifted through the macabre evidence, painstakingly piecing together the chilling narrative of Dharma's crimes. The investigation was fraught with challenges, not least of which was the sheer extent of Dharma's criminal activities. But every hurdle was met with unwavering determination. Every setback was met with renewed vigor. The investigators knew they were dealing with a predator and they were determined to bring him to justice. The breakthrough came in the form of a survivor, a brave soul who managed to escape Dharma's clutches. His harrowing account provided the investigators with the final piece of the puzzle the key that would unlock the door to Dharma's dark world. The gathering and analysis of evidence, the countless hours of tireless work, and the relentless pursuit of justice finally led to Dharma's arrest. It was a moment of triumph, tinged with the sorrowful reality of the lives lost and the horrors endured. The dedication and perseverance of the investigators were commendable. In the face of unimaginable horrors, they stood their ground, and fought for justice. Their relentless pursuit of the truth, their commitment to their duty, and their unwavering resolve were instrumental in bringing Dharma's reign of terror to an end. The relentless pursuit of justice finally caught up with the monster. In the courtroom, the monster was finally unveiled to the world. The trial of Jeffrey Dharma, also known as the Milwaukee Cannibal, was a spectacle that shook the nation. Commencing in early 1992, the proceedings were marked by a chilling dissection of Dharma's heinous acts. The prosecution laid out the gruesome evidence, recounting the 17 murders Dharma had confessed to, and the unspeakable atrocities he committed. In a desperate bid to humanize Dharma, the defense presented a narrative of a man plagued by uncontrollable compulsions, a victim of his own twisted desires. They argued that Dharma was not fully responsible for his actions, that he was driven by an irresistible force. Their goal was not to secure an acquittal, but to spare Dharma from the death penalty. The public's reaction to the trial was a whirlwind of shock, revulsion and disbelief. People couldn't comprehend how one man could commit such monstrous acts. They watched, transfixed, as the seemingly ordinary man was revealed to be a terrifying predator. When the time came for the verdict, the tension was palpable. The jury rejected the defense's claim of insanity. They found Dharma guilty but sane on 15 counts of murder. The sentence? 15 consecutive life terms in prison, with no possibility of parole. Upon hearing the sentence, Dharma showed no emotion. It was as if he had accepted his fate long before the verdict was handed down. The courtroom, 
once filled with the echoes of his monstrous axe, fell into a solemn silence. Justice was served, but the scars left by the monster were far from healed. The trial marked the end of Dharma's reign of terror, but the trauma he inflicted on his victims and their families lingered. It served as a grim reminder of the darkness that can lurk beneath the surface of an ordinary man, a chilling testament to the depths of human depravity. The man was gone, but the monster lived on in the minds of many. Jeffrey Dahmer, the infamous Milwaukee cannibal, left a legacy that's hard to erase. His heinous acts didn't only end lives, but they also destroyed families, leaving them with a void that no passage of time could ever fill. Parents lost their children, siblings lost their brothers, and friends lost their companions. The grief was immeasurable, the pain unbearable. The aftermath of Dharma's case saw a significant shift in law enforcement practices. It served as a stark reminder that evil could lurk anywhere, even beneath the veneer of a seemingly ordinary man. The police began to invest more in psychological profiling, aiming to catch such monsters before they could strike again. Dharma's case also highlighted the importance of listening to victims and taking their reports seriously. The cries for help that were once dismissed were now given the attention they deserved. In prison, Dharma was a marked man. His notoriety made him a target. He spent his days largely in solitude, with his thoughts as his only company. Yet, there was no remorse, no plea for forgiveness. Dharma remained the enigma that he was outside the prison walls. In November of 1994, Dharma met his end at the hands of a fellow inmate. The news of his death was met with a myriad of reactions. For some, it was a sigh of relief, a feeling that justice was finally served. For others, it was a grim reminder of the lives lost and the pain inflicted. The monster was dead, but the memory of his reign of terror lingered. Dharma's legacy is a haunting tale of the human capacity for evil. It's a chilling reminder that monsters exist, not in our imaginations, but in the real world. And it's up to us to ensure that such a tragedy is never repeated. In the wake of such horror, one can't help but ponder the deeper questions. As we delve into the aftermath of Jeffrey Dahmer's monstrous acts, we find ourselves standing at the intersection of psychology, society and the human condition. Dahmer's case is a stark reminder of the darkness that can lurk beneath the surface, even in the most ordinary of individuals. Let's take a moment to reflect on the psychological implications. Dharma, like many serial killers, exhibited signs of antisocial personality disorder, but what sets him apart is his apparent lack of remorse, his inability to empathize with his victims. This chilling detachment from human emotion is a characteristic often associated with psychopathy, a condition not easily detected and even less easily treated. His case raises complex questions about the nature of evil and the limits of human empathy. But beyond the individual, Dharma's case also raises critical societal questions. How did he manage to evade detection for so long? And why were his pleas for help, as subtle as they may have been, not heard or acknowledged? It's a grim reminder of our societal blind spots, our tendency to overlook the signs of someone spiraling into darkness. In the face of such chilling acts, one might wonder what could have been done to prevent Dharma's descent into monstrosity. Could early intervention have made a difference? Studies suggest that early detection and intervention in cases of antisocial behavior, particularly during childhood and adolescence, can help mitigate the development of such destructive patterns. This begs the question, could a more proactive approach to mental health have altered Dharma's path? Furthermore, Dharma's case underscores the importance of community vigilance. His neighbors reported unusual smells and sounds, yet these red flags were largely ignored. Would a more responsive community or a more investigative police force have brought Dharma's reign of terror to an end sooner? The lessons from Dharma's case are manifold. They remind us to pay heed to the silent cries for help, to not dismiss the unusual, and to always maintain a vigilant eye on our communities. They underscore the urgency of investing in mental health, of understanding the roots of antisocial behavior, and of acknowledging that no one is beyond help. Yet, despite the lessons gleaned, the questions remain. The gnawing, unsettling questions that keep us awake at night. Could Dharma's transformation into a monster have been prevented? And if so, how? The answers may never be clear, but it is in the search for these answers that we might prevent the birth of another monster.